Hello friends. Welcome back to your simulate team. Today's topic is how to diagnose a bleeding disorder due to liver failure. This is a very important topic for USMLE examination. Right now, I am covering a topics related to USMLE CK and Step 3. That's why I will not be discussing in detail regarding the pathophysiology of this disease. But my dear friends, definitely it will help you for USMLE Step 1 also. So try to concentrate on these points and I will tell you the important points how the USMLE will trick you. Ok guys and please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and please tell your friends about our channel. Ok so we are going to talk about this how to diagnose a bleeding disorder in a liver failure patient. So in USMLE examination they will pose a question to you that the patient is on liver failure and he is doing fine but suddenly he started to see blood in his stools or hematemesis also it can be a case like this or they might give the clinical features of liver failure with the bleeding disorder so try to think of liver disease bleeding due to the liver failure now how do you differentiate because they will, they will give you the four to five options for that vitamin k deficiency can be there vitamin uh, sorry uh, vitamin k deficiency liver failure and other bleeding disorders also right so you need to differentiate that's why now tell me what is the importance of liver in regards to the bleeding liver synthesizes or uh, it has a role in all the coagulation factors clotting factors right except that's the question for you tell me except it own synthesizes one coagulation factor what's that okay take your time and think and tell me no mm -hmm. yes it's a factor eight and own willebrand factor these factors are not dependent on the liver so they are not affected in a liver failure patients now the interesting question or interesting part comes that is now what will be the lab findings guys the pt and the ptt will be raised oh that's very interesting why pt is raised tell me we have uploaded a video different video on a pt and the ptt just go through that type pt or prothrombin time by mrcpch team or uh, partial thromboplasmin time by MRCPCS team you will get those videos on YouTube just go through once because those are very important for your examination for USML examination very important points now the PT there's a prothrombin time uh, what are the coagulation factors are seen with this is a 1 2 5 and 7 and 10 so 8 is not included in the PT right 1 2 se 5 7 and 10 that's why because of this what happens the PT will be affected more than PTT in your simple examination they can give PT and the PTT is raised look at the level the level of PT compared to the PTT they will give the PTT is raised but little above the normal that's it whereas a PTT would be very hugely elevated or severely affected that's why initially what happens the patient will have more PTT the PT sorry PT is elevated than PTT but in the la later stages or in the later stages both are elevated but the PT levels are increased okay like same like alcohol liver diseases where you see ASTs are elevated but ASTs are elevated more than ALTs same like this okay now I will confuse you oh ho, I would say it might be due to vitamin K deficiency now shall I pose the question to you or you will pose a question to me 
Okay, let me pose a question. You answer me. Think. What do you do? Guys, if you want to differentiate in a patient of liver failure, whether the bleeding is due to the liver failure or due to the vitamin K deficiency. The answer is just give the vitamin K. If the bleeding stops, then you are done. You are right at the diagnosis. That is it is due to the vitamin K deficiency. If not, then it's due to the liver failure. So what we learned? We learned the two, two important points. If you are sure about the diagnosis, if you are looking for a diagnosis of uh, bleeding due to the liver failure, look at the PT and the PTT levels. Both might be raised, but the PT is severely affected. Or sometimes they can give only PT is elevated. Okay. The second important point is if they give vitamin K deficiency and the bleeding stops, then it's a vitamin K deficiency. It's not a liver failure, uh, bleeding due to liver failure. Okay. Very important points. How do you treat it? Okay. Well, the patient is vitamin K deficient. Then you give vitamin K. But what about if there is it is due to the bleeding due to the liver failure? Okay, I will answer this question and you have to tell me why. It's a FFP. That's the fresh frozen plasma. Now you tell me why fresh frozen plasma? Okay, the answer for this is I gave you the pause, I gave you some time to think. The answer for this is because the fresh frozen plasma has all the clotting factors with it. So that's why we give in this patients with liver failure. And the rest of the conditions you need to treat in the liver failure. But bleeding due to the liver failure, if it's severe, go ahead with the fresh frozen plasma. Okay guys? The other important thing what I forgot to tell you, that there can be a low platelet count in a patients with uh, liver diseases okay there is a link below I I don't know whether you are able to click on that if you click on that you will be you, you will be opening a page on FFP by Myanmar CPCS team so just go through once because you need to know the test very well so that you can because sometimes they can ask you and trick you very nicely and ask you the indication of FFP so if I have told you in detail regarding the indications of FFP how it is done and everything so just go through once and definitely you will get more and more knowledge hey guys thank you so much for watching my video i hope you're going out with some knowledge okay thank you so much take care